Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Jason Matthew. Uh, this is the part two uh, video that talks about the um, so how to understand the Cisco AP and how to plan the RF based on the AP model uh, that you are going to use for that uh, upcoming site or the new site. What are the things you have to keep it in mind regarding um, regarding a new deployment or new country, new site? In that kind of scenario, how you can plan out what is the right AP model and how you will um, uh, use that for uh, doing the predictive survey kind of thing. So uh, before we uh, continue from the previous one, let me just give a uh, recap on what we discussed last time. We discussed about the data sheet, how to uh, read the data uh, AP capabilities on your uh, planning. Then we talked about uh, compliance lookup tool to identify what is the right AP type on your site and uh, or whatever AP types are available for your regulatory domain based on your country. Then we also then we also talked about um, the regulatory domain compliance side. Then we also talked about the channel um, availability on each country and all those things we talked about all those things now let's see uh, the same thing on the controller so uh, in this setup i have um, 15520 uh, so this 15520 have one uh, ap connected to this so this is a 3800 ap i also have a, a console available for this AP. this is my ap uh, it's a 3800 series access point and um, this is what we are going to use it on this video Okay, so before we uh, jump into uh, access point and find the capabilities and all those things, let's just uh, see the configuration on the WLC side. As you know, everything related to wireless is coming under uh, wireless tab. Then uh, we have uh, 11AC, 11A and uh, B. Then uh, we already covered this one in a previous video, so you can refer those videos how to use this RRM side. Uh, so uh, the first thing uh, we will check the TPC side. So when we set the TPC power level, you don't have power level settings kind of thing inside the TPC you know, configuration. You can set the minimum and uh, maximum, and based on that, it will define the uh, power levels for your AP. So either you can set this one globally if your uh, WLC is following the standard across the world or across your uh, deployments. If not, uh, you can use the RF profile. We already talked about uh, RF profile side. So you can use uh, this side also for setting the uh, site specific or floor specific uh, uh, RF profile kind of thing. If it's global, it's better to uh, set up in the global settings. And TPC is one, then another key uh, feature is uh, DCA. What are the channels available for your country and how you want to uh, use it for your country and all those things. The TPC side, we will cover um, later. So let's talk about the DCA first. So as you can see here, um, you have some channels enabled for this particular uh, uh, settings. You can see a lot of channels available here. Only these channels are enabled and you have an option to enable UNI2 extended channel. But all these things are related to your country code or your regulatory domain. So you have to select the country code here and the regulatory domain side configuration will be applied based on that. So now you can see that there are channels like this. And uh, even if I am enabling this UNI extended, these new channels are not getting added or you are not able to see all these extended channels in this list because of your country code. So that's a key uh, configuration we have to do. As you can see here, we have country code of uh, IN. So when we select IN, you have um, country code of IN selected and it supports only D domain or uh, N domain. So based on the AP model that D and N will change. Again, uh, we talked about the uh, compliance lookup tool. Uh, that link is provided here. When you click on this one, the compliance lookup tool will open in the background. So uh, you can use this one for understanding this one. It's This link is uh, currently available on the WLC side. Okay, so now we have uh, India and uh, based on the regulatory domain, uh, you have uh, data sheet here then as per data sheet you can see uh, the regulatory domain d is having only these channels available for uh, india so based on this one you don't have those uh, uni extender channels so that's why you are not able to see 
all these um, you know, channels available on the DCS side. So let me enable uh, another domain. So I'm going to enable uh, USA, United States, then uh, Great Britain, one second. And uh, Great Britain, like U uh, United Kingdom, the country code is like Great Britain. Then uh, I'm clicking on apply. So once it's applied, you can see uh, these three things are, uh, these three countries are enabled. Then you can see what are the available regulatory domains for um, your controller because you enable multiple countries. So most of the time, if you are having only one country in your list, then um, your number of channels available and everything will be um, regulated uh, based on the country code. But if you have multiple countries available for your um, uh, support in the WLC side, then that can mess up things in the background. So uh, when when you are doing the planning, but WLC and IP will not uh, move away from the regulated domain. It will always keep the regulated domain. It's a hard coded one. Only in universal AP you will be you will be able to edit that. So uh, now we said three countries. Let's go back and see the same configuration DCA. So as you can see here extra channels got enabled. So this one was not coming in uh, previous settings because uh, this is not available uh, as per the country code India. Now we enable uh, the domain B and uh, as you can uh, see here, the B domain have extra channels. This is the UNI extended channel side. So you have extra channels and all those channels are enabled for uh, use. Then in India, you have some extra channels like 169 and 73, 173. So all these things are available uh, for use. The same thing is applicable for uh, setting the channel on the access point. So right now we have all these channel enabled, but we have only one AP. And as you can see here, this AP is coming from India and this regulatory domain is N. You have an option to customize your APs, right? So customize your RF. So you can go to the uh, RF side. You can uh, click on this particular blue button. You don't have to click. You have to just place your mouse pointer. Then you will get configure option. As you can see here, everything is uh, globally set. Means RRM is taking care of this one. But if you want to make a change, you have an option to change it. Here you can see the list of channels. So you are setting your channel, custom channel is setting on this one and you are bringing down this their list and you can see only those channels available for India because of the regulated domain mapping on this AP. Even if you want, you will not be able to set those uh, channels here. So this is how the regulated domain controls your uh, channel availability, DCS side. At the same time, you have uh, power level configuration, right? As you know, uh, 3800 series access point supports eight power levels in 5 gigahertz. So starts with um, 2 dBm till 23 dBm. And you supposed to see eight different power levels starting from one to eight in your AP. But um, here, when I change this to custom and I check the uh, available power levels, you can see only six. That means you have only six power levels available for this particular regulatory domain. That's the reason uh, you are seeing only six power levels here. As you can see here, when you set the power level one, the expectation is APs are functioning on maximum available power. That is 23 dBm. Uh, this AP is capable of doing that, but um, we already seen that we have only six power level. So let's see what is the mapping of power level one in, uh, in 3800 AP. So this is the uh, AP uh, console. Let me log in. Okay, I'm in um, show interface dot eleven radio one. So this shows uh, some of the information about your um, radio, how many uh, packets transmitted and uh, receiver transmitter all, all those information can be found uh, in this interface side but if you want to see more in-depth information on the radio the command is show controllers controllers of dot uh, 11 radio one so this particular command will uh, let you know what are the uh, extra things you can uh, find uh, on the ap side so I'm just uh, finishing this display, then I will go back and see it. Okay, so as you can see here, 
this starts with uh, radio information. So here you can see the basic information about MTU, metric, then uh, errors, packets, RX packet, errors, TX packet, errors, and all those things. Then this radio uh, summary is the uh, place we have to uh, keep it in mind. So as you can see here, supported channels, this much, 36, 40, uh, 44, 48, all these channels are available. These are the supported channels. And configured uh, configured slot one is 36. The channel uh, number is uh, 36. Number of uh, antennas are four, then antenna gain is five, then uh, configured power level is one, and configured power is 16. So this is the place you can see the mapping between power level 1 and 16. Then total supported power levels are 6. Then allowed power levels. It's starting from 16. When you are setting power level 1, that is uh, directly mapping to 16. You know uh, your power level 17 is uh, seen on 3800, but here it's a maximum power level. You can go up to 16. 16, 13, uh, 10, 7, 4, 2. Those are the power levels av available for your country based on this particular um, configuration. The frequency list, um, again, let me just finish this one. Frequency list, you can see the uh, frequency mapping between uh, channels, what is the megahertz used in the background, the antenna configuration, rate configuration, EDCA configuration. This is how the uh, EDCA is configured for your uh, AP, the specific AP. Then uh, antenna type, then uh, stiffer configuration associated client list vlan and uh, status then uh, vlan summary show controller dot 11 one actually um, shows all these information now let's go and make some changes on the other side um, so now i set the power level into six by the way with um, configuring manually on the ap side you will be able to select whatever channels available here because you are going into manual mode. So whatever configuration under uh, this model is not applicable here. So I can even set a, a different channel here. So when I click on apply, you can see the configuration getting applied here. The 149 is applied here. I can change this to uh, something like 165. This is the AP configuration. I am doing it directly on the AP. So you can see 169 is applied. Now I'm going back to global and uh, clicking on apply. This will uh, change the channel into 36 because you have um, only 36 and 44 available here. So just now I enable 44. So 36 uh, happen in the background. So when you are setting the uh, channels, this global configuration can be overridden. It's a normal WLC behavior. Override option will actually override the global setting. So basically you can you can make those changes uh, directly on the ap but uh, globally when you are running uh, uh, algorithm the uh, dc algorithm it will take channels from this list if the channels are not available here it will not be able to do any kind of adjustment on your channel um, uh, because those channels are not available now we set the power level let's see the power level here show controller dot radio 1 now uh, i'm not interested on uh, other side so as you can see here we have all these channels available for this ap but uh, global configuration of uh, our rrm says you have to stick with 36 and 44 so it will stick with that then the number of um, uh, configured power level as you can see here uh, we have uh, multiple power levels available we can go up to uh, 16 total uh, six power levels are available but as you can see here it's only uh, running on power level six that is configured as per the uh, wlc ap side so let me just uh, give this back to global configuration the power level global and apply then next cycle will kick in and the power level will change so it will take time so let me just manually uh, make those change i did the change uh, you can see there are some configuration pushed from the WLC side. Then uh, the configured level became 16 here. So 
the major thing you have to keep it in mind is how this ap regulatory domains controls your ap so when you are doing a planning so for an example this ap is going to be used on your floor plan or uh, in your predictive survey in that case you should not be setting the power level other than the levels available here so the recommendation is to use the power level 3 so that's a recommendation from cisco side in most of the places so that you will have uh, room uh, in the um, regulatory domain side or the rrm side so you always make sure you are using the right power levels based on your regulatory domain don't stick with these power levels this is not the real scenario in your network so it's completely depends on your regulatory domain so please make sure you are using uh, the available power levels of that particular ap based on your regulatory domain also make sure you are uh, when you are doing a manual uh, mapping or you are controlling your rrm side just make sure you have only supported channels enable for the uh, country to uh, work on the rrm side if you are doing a static mapping uh, you have to plan like when you are doing the rf planning with a static channel mapping you have to consider this one in your channel mapping so the best way to find this information is directly plug in your ap go to your ap console find these values note it down and work on it whenever you are doing the rf planning if you are doing the uh, right thing on uh, finding out the information and using that in the rf uh, planning your rf will be behaving properly otherwise all kind of weird issues will come into picture and uh, it will directly impact the wireless uh, uh, performance on your network i hope uh, these two videos will uh, help you in identifying the right ap and uh, uh, putting the right uh, power levels, uh, using the right power levels in the planning phase, then uh, using the right channel set when you are doing the RF planning and all those things. The uh, I'm, I'm planning to put some more videos related to uh, RF planning side. Uh, what are the things you have to consider when you are doing an RF planning? We'll see you in those videos. Thank you for watching.